Okay, Mr. Palmer here, another A-level computer science video, open and closed source software. Uh, big questions for this one, two of them. Why would uh, an organization choose to publish closed source software? And uh, are there any advantages to open source software? Thinking about both users and the actual creators of the software. So um, here we go, closed source software, first of all, probably what we're most familiar with, uh, where software is downloaded and run as compiled machine code. That means that you, when you are running the executable, when you when you possess the executable, you can't actually see the source code. The opposite of that would be if we were actually using interpreted code that was being uh, translated as we were running the program. Uh, obviously, then we would be able to see the source code. There are several implications of that. Basically, uh, we as the user would be able to amend the source code. A competitor would be able to gain inside knowledge of how that application is working and create an alternative program. Um, and also the software will be open to criminal exploitation. Um, obviously, uh, the competitors are the biggest um, uh, implication that companies would be concerned with because that obviously reduces the financial gain. If you can imagine if Microsoft basically supplied the source code for Microsoft Office to everybody and that was interpreted um, every time you ran that software, um, someone else would be able to basically whip off the code. Um, obviously, that would be illegal but they would be able to use the code to create their own version of the program, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Which is why companies are interested in creating closed source software to protect their uh, financial standing. The opposite of this now, we're talking about open source software where you can actually see the source code, okay? That's made publicly available. People are free to then download the code, change it, contribute to it, you know, um, fork the, um, the application to create a niche version of it that meets their needs. So the implications of that are basically anyone can have a part in development. There are customized branches which meet people's niche needs uh, and wants. Um, and debugging and fixes are often completed faster. And sometimes the fixes are more creative. We're going to look at the reasons why later on. And obviously with open source software, it's often free for the end user. Um, now, uh, some examples of open, open source software that you might know. Uh, obviously Linux as the operating system, loads of people around the world use that, um, quite popular as well with servers, um, uh, offshoot of Linux, Android um, basically is built upon Linux, uh, most probably the most popular um, mobile operating system around the world at the moment. Uh, Apache web server runs uh, most of the world's websites are hosted on an Apache server uh, for historical reasons probably because Windows servers back in the day. Um, the GIMP is an example where the open source community got behind an idea and created um, a software that um, is of very high quality very very quickly as well and that was when people were quite frustrated with Photoshop and its prohibitive costs and they said why can't we make the same thing and make it freely available um, and uh, it was created. Um, then uh, Firefox is another example used to be Netscape many many years ago and then uh, the Mozilla Foundation was created and Firefox was basically released as an open source browser now um, you might question how can uh, making open source so open source software be financially viable for companies so for example uh, companies like um, Canonical and I'll show you their website now in fact you can see Canonical um, they so this is in 2016, end of October 2016. So if you are watching the video later on down the line, and you wonder why the website looks different or dated, that's why. Um, so you can see here on their website, they basically um, canonical create Ubuntu. Uh, so they, they take the base Linux um, operating system and they put all their stuff on top of it to make it easy to use. But then they also offer um, um, uh, consultancy services um, to companies that they can use Canonical's expertise to leverage the power of Linux in their organization. So that's how they can make money on one side and support free software on the other. Okay. So that's through um, so providing paid support contracts. Um, open SUSE, I don't know if that still exists or not. I haven't used it for many, many years, but that was uh, another one as well. Okay. So um, if you want to compare open source software and closed source software, just thinking about the quality of the two, okay, 
with open source software you have more people from diverse backgrounds working on the software so with Linux they, they reckon that I think they calculate that there's an average of nine um, changes per hour to the source base around the world okay because they're you know um, what what is what's it Linus is all every uh oh, I've forgotten what it is something to do with the number of eyeballs making problems shallow basically uh the more eyeballs there are looking at a problem uh, the more likely it is that there will be someone who can spot a problem and someone else who knows how to fix it okay so when you've got more people from diverse backgrounds you've got fast bug fixes and regular updates compared to closed source software you might have a smaller group of people working on it within a company a very small team they have a particular mindset and therefore you may get less frequent updates and those those uh, fixes may not uh, also be as creative okay um, the, or on the flip side with open source software there's less money to invest and therefore there are fewer resources available so the end product might not look as polished and feel as polished as closed source software okay because they obviously have more finance and resources to pump behind the product so therefore they may be able to create a more professional look and feel for your software so Another big thing to be concerned about, obviously, is security. Um, if your if your software is open, then anyone can see the code. Therefore, they can exploit it. Okay, and obviously, if they're exploiting it, they're not li likely to share the fact that there's a, a bug somewhere that can be exploited. Um, the flip side of that argument is that, again, with the um, the more rivals, therefore, the shallower the problem, the the project. You know, the more people that are working on a project. Uh, the more people there are to find holes and to fix the, the situation okay so an example of that is OpenSSL uh, and this relates to something called Heartbleed where in 2014 a Google employee discovered um, an exploit which basically dumped um, portions of the server's memory now OpenSSL powered uh, was being used on the majority of um, uh, web servers around the world um, to provide SSL security okay so um, some people say that because the code was public the bug was able to be found and fixed quite quickly on the flip side other people would say that because the code was public we actually don't know how long the bug was there and was being exploited by malicious actors there's a typo on that line exploited is spelled incorrectly it's supposed to be EXP E X P L O I T E D. Okay. Now, um, obviously, you can look at both sides of the argument. All right. However, um, it's worth noting that although OpenSSL was the most popular um, security um, SSL um, uh, platform out there, okay, there was only one person working on it full time, and it only received two thousand dollars a year in donations at that point in time. Okay. So. That, that really drives home the fact with open source software not having resources on the same level as um, as commercial products, closed source, closed source commercial products. Now companies like IBM, um, Google and a few other companies, they, they basically they've gotten together to try and create a foundation that will pump um, money and resources, so manpower hours, uh, so, so people working full time and sharing their um, their their developments across the the community um on you know core technologies that lots of people around the world rely on that are open source however you know is is also kind of unfair that a few companies are putting all of these resources in for the benefit of everybody but the the the, the when you, do, you dig deeper into the argument you can see that um actually um the fact that it was that um, OpenSSL was public allowed that bug to be found and fixed. And the, the flip side of the argument about not knowing how long the bug was being exploited is also true. But we can really see that the reason why um, this bug may have gone undetected for a long time is because those resources weren't there in order to provide um, code reviews and um, more thorough testing, uh, etc. Okay. So there's the big questions there again for you. So why would an organization choose to public closed source software? Relating that back to their uh, issues with um, wanting to protect their code in order to um, uh, keep away competitors, to maintain their financial advantages and to maintain security. And then the advantage of open source software where um, the more eyeballs there are, the shallower the problem gets. 
and um, the you know the the the, the speed and response of getting creative fixes right so thank you very much and uh, look forward to the next video that I'm going to share with you guys